savage warriors and instinctive hunters from the frozen death world of Fenris. The Space Wolves are an indomitable and fiercely independent chapter of the Empress Space Marines. In this video, we'll be showing you how to paint a formidable Terminator in the colours of the Space Wolves. The techniques and the colours used in this quick and easy guide are transferable to any Space Wolves you have in your collection, so you can have a whole army ready to go in no time. If you're new to painting, we've got a playlist called the Citadel Colour Painting Essentials videos. These will teach you all you need to know to get started with painting Warhammer. The paints we've used are on screen now. Remember, we're painting in the colours of the Space Wolves, but you can paint your miniatures however you like. Also on screen now is any additional equipment we've used. This includes brushes and mediums. However, feel free to use whatever brushes you're most comfortable with, and if you don't have mediums at home, you can always switch these out with water. So the first thing we need to do is undercoat the model, and for this colour scheme, we've used Mechanica Standard Grey. This is a great mid-tone undercoat, which will work really well for all the colours we'll be using. So for the first stage of this guide, we'll be painting that armour, and we'll be using Rust Grey for this. So with a medium base brush, thin your paint down on your palette and apply a few layers. It'll probably take around three layers to get a full coverage over that undercoat. Now Rust Grey is a layer paint, but we can absolutely use it for base coating too. It's just a little thinner, so we might need a layer or two more to get a full coverage. We're using a larger brush here, as we don't need to worry about being neat at all. Just take your time and make sure you get into all those tricky to reach areas. For the next stage, we'll be painting the yellow details using Avalon Sunset. Here we're switching to a smaller brush, so we're going to use a medium layer brush. And just like before, we need to thin our paint down with some water before we apply it to the miniature. Doing this avoids clogging up any of that fine detail. Again, this will take two or three coats to get full coverage. We're using this to paint the shoulder pads and one of the knee pads too. Just take your time and be as neat as you can around that armour that we've already painted. But don't worry, you can always tidy up mistakes with some thin down rust grey. The next paint we'll be using is Abaddon Black. We'll be using this for a few different areas on this miniature. So to start off with, we'll paint it onto the gun casing and the undersuit. Again, we need to thin this down and apply a few thin layers, taking care around details we've already painted. Now the Space Wolves prefer to follow their own traditions when it comes to emblems and insignias, displaying those that are dictated by a commanding wolf lord. Games Workshop has loads of reference material available to help you identify what heraldry to add to your model and where to place it. For this Terminator, we'll be adding some stripes to that knee pad, so we'll start out by marking them out using a pencil. We're only looking for a rough guide here, so it doesn't have to be spot on. Just carefully mark out the areas that we want to paint in black. And once you're happy with your rough outlines, we can start blocking in that area using Abaddon Black. Make sure you thin it down first to avoid building up texture on the miniature. Then just take your time and carefully paint in those areas. Don't worry if you make any mistakes, you can just tidy back up with some of that Avalon Sunset. And once you're happy with the design that you've chosen, you can then add some scratches too. We'll use Avalon Sunset for this. Adding scratches is a great way to help cover up any slight wiggly lines, so don't worry about having perfect lines. Next, we'll use Celestra Grey to paint the Crux Terminatus and any rocks on the base too. Just like your other base coats, thin this paint down and apply a few layers, taking care around the details we've already painted. And once that's done, you can see that this miniature is really starting to come together. We've just got a few more details to paint now. Now we'll paint the lenses, including the eye lenses and also any Purity Seal wax. For these areas, we'll use Mephiston Red. When you're painting small details like eye lenses, it's really important that we have a stable painting position. So take your time and make sure you're comfortable. It might also help to hold your breath while you're painting those details if you're able to. Take your time and be as neat as you can, but don't worry, like we said before, we can always tidy up mistakes with any of the previous colours. Now we'll be using Wraithbone to paint any parchment, and we've also got a skull on the base, so we'll use it for this too. Apply this just like all your other base and layer paints, thinning it down and applying a few layers. We'll be adding a wash over lots of these details later, which will help to add lots of depth and really tie the whole miniature together. Once those areas are painted, we've just got a few metallic details to paint next. Now it's time to paint the gold details, and for these, we'll use Retributor Armour. Again, we'll stick with that small layer brush as it will give us the most control of the paint. We'll be using this to paint the chest eagle and any other iconography. 
Now this is a metallic base paint, but we treat it just like all the other base and layer paints, thinning it down on our palette and applying a few layers. Again, take care around the details that we've already finished painting. The neater we are to start with, the better the end result. But don't worry, we can always tidy up mistakes. With that done, we'll move on to the silver details, and for these, we'll use lead belcher. It's normal for paints to separate in the pot when they've been stood for a while, so don't forget to give your paint a good shake before you open it and use it on a miniature. Now, when you've finished using metallic paints, it's always a good idea to change your paint water. This will stop any of those shiny flakes getting into your non-metallic paints. And with that done, all our base coats are finished, so now we can move on to apply some shades. Our first shade will be Agrax Earthshade, and we'll be using this with Lamia Medium to achieve a few different effects on our miniature. So to start off with, we'll thin it down. So we'll take one part Lamia Medium to one part Agrax Earthshade, and we'll be applying this over any parchment and also the skull on the base. We thin this down so that it's a little bit more subtle. This avoids overpowering any of those really pale base coats. Once that's done, we'll then take the Agrax Earthshade straight from the pot, and we'll apply this over any red and gold details. You'll see that because we haven't thinned this down, it's got a much stronger colour, so it'll add much more depth to those recesses. When you're applying a shade, just be careful to control any excess pooling. If you find it is pooling in the recesses too much anywhere, just clean off your brush and use that to soak up any excess. Then the final way we'll use this paint is as a recess shade for the armour. A recess shade means we just apply the shade into the armour panel lines. If we applied it all over the armour, this would change the colour of the armour, and we don't want to do this, as we'd have to spend a long time layering back over with rust grey. So by doing this, it means we might only have a few splodges here and there to tidy up later. This will take a little while, but it's well worth the effort. Just take your time and work your way around the miniature, dropping that shade into all of those recesses. And like we said, if you do make any mistakes, you can always thin down rust grey and use that to tidy back up. Our last shade will be Norn Oil, and we'll be using this on the silver and the grey details. When we're applying this shade, we want to apply it heavily and neatly, working in small sections. And we just need to be careful to control any excess pooling. We can do this by making sure we don't overload our brush. This is a subtle shade, so it'll add lots of depth without overpowering any of those colours. Now your Space Wolves Terminator is more than ready to take on the All Father's enemies on the gaming table. However, if you'd like to see an easy way to add a little extra step to this miniature, then keep watching. Now the final thing we're going to do is apply an edge highlight to the armour. For this, we'll use Fenrisian Grey. We'll be using a small layer brush to do this highlight, as this will give us the most control of the paint. When we're edge highlighting, it's really up to you how much or how little you want to do. You could work your way around the whole miniature, picking out most of the edges. Or you could just choose to pick out the more prominent ones. It's really up to you. An important thing to think about here is the consistency of your paint. So make sure that you thin it down on your palette with some water. We want it to glide effortlessly off the brush, but we don't want it to be too watery because it won't settle on the miniature correctly. Once you're happy with your paint consistency, you can then load up your brush, but be careful not to overload it. Then, using the edge of your brush, you can run this along the hard armour panel lines. Doing this catches all those edges and creates a quick and crisp highlight in no time. So, as we said, take your time and work your way around the miniature, picking out as many of those edges as you like. And if you make any mistakes, just take some rust grey and use that to tidy back up. Also, don't be scared to move your miniature around as much as you need to, to get the correct angle for getting those edge highlights done. And there we are, your Space Wolves Terminator is finished, ready to hound foes and charge them with bestial aggression on the gaming table. You can now go on to base your model and apply any relevant transfers. We've used Armageddon Dunes to base our miniature, and if you'd like to learn more about technical paints, you can check out our video all about them. For more tutorials, tips and tricks, you can head to your local Warhammer store, where our amazing staff will be more than happy to help. Or you can head on over to citadelcolor.com. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Bye!